know, these performances, right, have got nothing to do with yogic pursuits for attaining spiritual awareness, you know. They've got nothing to do with shamanistic displays of human power, you know, or, 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 or mysterious sort of capabilities. They've got nothing to do with pseudoscientific, methodical sort of uh, uh, experiments, right? Um, these are artistic strategy. Uh, these ideas uh, came from doing the performance events. The early suspension events with ropes and harnesses uh, were fully amplified and uh, uh, I, I returned in 73 to Japan and um, uh, became intrigued not only in acoustically amplifying internal rhythms but actually visually probing uh, the body. So I proceeded to make three films of the inside of the body. <laughs> that experience sort of led me to question for the first time uh, the internal structure of the, the, the design of the body. You know, looking at the various things that were going on, I became interested in, 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 uh, in artificial hands and, um, you know, did a little bit of work in Germany uh, where I sort of looked at the three-fingered Otto Bock hand. I was more interested in the five-fingered approach that was happening in Japan and um, sort of uh, visited Professor Kato's laboratory at Waseda University, uh, visited Tokyo Institute of Technology and got an overview of what was going on with robotics and prosthetics. And, and so that's how the third hand project began. And um, having failed in my application to the Australia Council <laughs> for funding. Um, uh, it then took me four years and about $10,000 of my own money to, uh, to finish the hand. As many as half of the suspension vents were amplified as well, so there were bits of technology stuck on the body as well. Um, and uh, the last suspension event included, uh, 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 had the third hand attached. The last suspension event was at a, an abandoned monorail station in Ofuna and I had a remote control box in my left hand which controlled my sort of up and down motions and uh, the third hand was attached to the right side of the body and so uh, the performance consisted of um, uh, vertical up and down motion, amplified body signals and sounds and uh, activating and controlling the third hand motions. Well, if I use uh, muscle stimulators to jerk my arm involuntarily throughout the performance, um, uh, I'm not thinking that this particular motion is a Hindu-like, Eastern-like, um, you know, dance movement. I'm not appropriating, a, a, you know, a kind of an, a, a cultural image and, and using that to, to, to kind of uh, to trigger a, a sort of a dialectic um, which a lot of postmodern art does. The, the, the notion of, a, of an artist as, as a maker of images, as a maker of aesthetic objects, um, I think is inadequate. This is what's intriguing about performance art in general. You're not dealing with the illusions of images. You're dealing with real situations that the artist has to take the physical the consequences a for. Kind of, the whole issue of sort kind of, of um, post-evolutionary uh, guide, you know, sadomasochistic pursuits, really was not an issue until I until I went to the uh, West Coast and did some events there. Um, I mean, uh, to equate physical difficulty with sadomasochistic concerns is is is, is ludicrous. I'm not doing a, uh, a suspension event to 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 experience the. Uh, the pleasures of pain, you know, <laughs> just as uh, a woman giving birth is, is not doing that to, uh, to have a painful experience. Uh, the body's uh, design, its, its soft tissue, uh, even its, its wetness and its, and its um, molecular complexity perhaps have to be questioned because off the earth the body's softness, wetness and complexity will be difficult to sustain. The body is not as an object of desire, but the body as it becomes an object of design. So the idea here is that, that it's no longer simply a site for the psyche, it becomes a structure that can, that can be sort of redesigned. With increasing miniaturization, technology now is not simply littering the human landscape. Technology now is landing on the human body. 
um, it's sticking to the skin. It's being attached in, a, in, in prosthetic ways. Um, it's even being guided safely into soft tissue by, by microsurgeons. The body now is in a position to become a host for micro-miniaturised uh, bits of technology. In fact, uh, I would say one sort of post-evolutionary strategy might be to recolonise the human body um, with micro-miniaturised robots to sort of augment our bacterial and sort of viral populations. Technology isn't, isn't any longer an alien artefact. Uh, it becomes a component of the body. If the body was designed in a more modular fashion, uh, then of course we could, uh, this would facilitate, you know, replacing malfunctioning components in the body. And if we can replace malfunctioning organs, then technically there should be no reason for death. And so uh, we, we've all of a sudden redefined, uh, or we have to redefine what existence means. Um, so to be alive is more to be operational, to be functional. How can we project human presence and how can we affect physical action at a distance? Extending the behavioural and performance possibilities of the body beyond its mere physiology and the local space that it occupies. The, the experience of, of the hollow body is not merely a a, con a conceptual one for me or, or, a, or a particular strategy with synthetic skin. Every time I amplify my internal body rhythms um, I'm externalizing these functions out of this particular humanoid shape. Uh, the cuboid space of the room become, becomes the new container of body rhythms and body functions, right? Our consciousness and our, our sort of raison d'etre has, has seems to have been sort of shriveled you know, into, into this sort of, um, uh, you know, lump of jelly in, 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 in our cranium. And one has to remember that, that um, even the, the, the notion of a brain or the notion of a mind um, is meaningless without the sensory nerve endings um, uh, that, can, uh, that can pick up bits of information in the environment. Uh, you know, for the brain to process. We, we're not this sort of platonic spirit driving the body. We're not this Cartesian split between body and mind. Uh, when I say the body is obsolete, I'm talking about this particular body design. I'm not saying that we can discard bodies altogether. Um, certainly, we may not be able to recognise the re-engineered or redesigned bodies of, of the future, if we could extend our sensory perception of the world and input that into, into the body, reposition uh, human awareness in the world and, and perhaps uh, um, uh, um, uh, re-instill uh, an awe uh, and a sensitivity to, to, to the environment that we've sort of lost. And uh, with this recent project here at the Advanced Computer Graphics Centre of, of making a virtual arm, uh, well, uh, there'll be uh, uh, commands like a clutch command that'll enable me to sort of disengage from, from the initial um, arm, virtual arm that I'm operating. So that virtual arm would be left spasmodically twitching on the screen whilst I can engage with my replica replicate command, I can call up a second arm, clutch command again, engage with that second arm, so I can sort of multiply the screen full of virtual arms that I can, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, interactively control in different ways or leave automatically functioning. Um, and then with, say, a command like a graft command, I can then graft bits of an arm onto the previous arm. So I can have like a second arm grafted at the elbow or I can have a, a second hand grafted.